Good morning. Welcome to Letting Go in 2019. I'll be reading from The Language of Letting Go by Melody Beatty, copyright 1990, and giving a little bit of my own insights at the end. Communication. Part of owning our power is learning to communicate clearly, directly, and assertively. We don't have to beat around the bush in our conversations to control the reactions of others. Guilt-producing comments only produce guilt. We don't have to fix or take care of people with our words. We can't expect others to take care of us with words either. We can settle for being heard and accepted, and we can respectfully listen to what others have to say. Hinting at what we need doesn't work. Others can't read our mind, and they're likely to resent our indirectness. The best way to take responsibility for what we want is to ask for it directly, and we can insist on directness from others. If we need to say no to a particular request, we can. If someone is trying to control us through a conversation, we can refuse to participate. Acknowledging feelings such as disappointment or anger directly, instead of making others guess at our feelings or having our feelings come out in other ways, is part of responsible communication. If we don't know what we want to say, we can say that too. We can ask for information and use words to forge a closer connection but we don't have to take people around the block with our conversations. We don't have to listen to or participate in nonsense. We can say what we want and stop when we're done. Today, I will communicate clearly and directly in my conversations with others. I will strive to avoid manipulative, indirect, or guilt-producing statements. I can be tactful and gentle whenever possible, and I can be assertive if necessary. Wow. Okay, so this <laughs> this little reading on communication is a really good one for me because, as you know, I live in a situation and work in a situation where communication is key. I cannot beat around the bush. I cannot guilt trip. I cannot hint at things because both my husband and I do not get innuendos and hints and inside jokes, And although he gets the inside jokes more than I do. Um, but we have to talk very directly to each other. We have to express exactly what it is that we want and need from the other person and what we don't like and don't want from the other person. And it's very important to acknowledge what this book says about how people will resent you if you are too indirect. You need to express what you want, do it clearly, so that there's no questions about where you're coming from. Something I need to work on, something a lot of people need to work on. Communication is the ideal thing to keep a relationship going and keep it healthy and maintained with balance. And it's something that that's probably my biggest struggle, even though people have said we're like the best communicators in the world and we're the ideal couple and we're perfect at this and that. You've already seen that's not the case. <laughs> and uh, that is just something that I'm working on. I definitely don't deny that I struggle in that area. Um, with a person, like if I had married somebody that was neurotypical, didn't have any of these other issues, yes, I know we all have issues, but there's certain issues that are harder to deal with than others, and I feel that I am in that situation, and nobody can really say, oh, well, I do it this way or that way or whatever, because you're not in the situation, just like I'm not in yours. If I had married into a different situation or had a boyfriend that was a little bit different, it will go differently. Maybe I'd have different struggles to deal with. I have in the past, so I'm sure I would. But I'm in this situation now. I'm with this person. And this person sometimes doesn't get it. Sometimes I don't get it. And it's hard. And it, it feels like you're butting your head up against a wall. I'm sure he'll, he feels a lot of times like he's shouting and not being heard. So... I think it's an ideal situation or ideal idea to communicate openly and honestly and effectively and to not communicate at certain times. It's the not communicating, the not keeping things going, the not trying to figure it out and work it out that I struggle with because I'm a fixer. So I always want everything to have this neat little closure, if you will, at the end. I have a hard time leaving things undone. So that's something I'm working on, is just knowing when to say, hey, let's 
cover this later, or I don't have an answer right now, I'll come back to this. I have a hard time with that, because I want it done and dealt with so I can get on to the next thing. That's part of my personality. I am an ESTJ. So, um, or you might say a choleric melancholy, I guess. I'm the type of person that's very goal-driven and goal-focused, and I'm all about, okay, I did this today, what's next on the checklist? Well, people aren't checklists, and people don't live by my checklist. And they just, they have feelings, they have wants and hopes and needs and desires, and they have things that frustrate them. And I'm still trying to find the balance and all of that based on my personality. So hopefully I will work through that in time and be able to give a glowing report that this is no longer an issue, but for now it's an issue. So hopefully you will be able to work through your issues as well, and maybe we'll have a good story to tell when we come back. Anyway, thanks for watching Letting Go in 2019. I hope this helped you in some way or at least made you feel not so alone in your struggle. Um, stay tuned till tomorrow when I give you the next reading from Letting Go in 2019. And I will be uploading yesterday's, hopefully today, after I redo it without the wind sound. <laughs> Alright, thanks for watching. God bless. Bye.